Um, but it doesn't actually matter what what um, your what the actual topic is that you're that you're actually talking about. I remember um, every, after every uh, class for stand up comedy, I would offer the students. I would say, "Look, I know you're afraid of bombing. Um, I get it. I was afraid too." So what I'll do is we'll go to a open mic right at right now since we're done with class and I will bomb on purpose just so you guys see that it's it's fine life goes on nobody cares like it's just an open mic show it's not comedy central so um, I, I went to one of these shows and, and they told me not you know, don't bomb just do your your set and see what happens but we do want to see you actually perform so I went to this this dive bar it was the only place that was open after after the class and it was just a horrible show. It was a hell gig all the way. And I remember the the comedians before me, there was about four comics and it was open mic and and they all talked about sex um, and like just dirty, dirty humor. Not that sex is all dirty humor, but it was all the gross type of humor that you would you would see blue humor, like really, really out there, grotesque. And you know the audience was kind of laughing. They were they were like, okay, you know, it's not not bad, but not really good. And then I got on stage, and it's probably like midnight at this point. And I was like, okay, what am I going to talk about? Because I can talk about sex. I can do that. And if sex is like this really funny topic that always works, then I might as well go with it. But I decided to give the audience a, a choice, and I said, okay, so we can either talk about sex. And then I got, okay, a couple people were like, oh, that's all right, that's, that'd be fun. Or we can talk about semicolons. And I paused for a while. And the audience started thinking about it. And they thought I was joking for a second, but then they realized that I wasn't. And everyone started applauding. They were like, yeah, let's see you do semicolons in a dive bar at midnight while everyone's drunk. Talk about semicolons. And I talked about semicolons for about five minutes, segued into my stuff about reading out loud, and then jumped into the sex material that they passed up earlier. And I got extra time because I was killing it up there and the, and the booker would allow me to stay. Be so just look at this. This is a dive bar where everyone else is going with the sex material. That doesn't mean you have to actually go with the, the one bit of material that you think is funny. Like sex itself is not the best topic. In fact, it got a it became a worse topic the more people talked about it. So if ten comedians talk about sex in a row, as an audience member, you don't really want to hear about that anymore. So it was funny, and you know, the idea of sexual jokes can be funny, but you'd rather just talk about something new. So that, so the ability to talk about any topic is something that's really going to help you out in your career. And don't fall into the trap of thinking that one topic is actually funnier than the other because that's not true at all. So as the only difference I would say is, is do what you think is funny. So, I mean, obviously semicolons, they can either be extremely boring or very funny depending on how you feel about them. I have a perspective about them because I didn't know how to use them. I always thought people that used them were just pricks. So I talked about that on stage and that different view of a semicolon is what allowed it to, to be funny. But what's important is that you actually have your own unique perspective on on uh, on your material. So think about the other people, uh, the great comedians that have a unique perspective, like people like Ray Romano. His perspective is always about his family and the the personal problems that he's going through. So it's very relatable. Even though you know, I, like the first time I heard him, I think I was I was in high school still, so I didn't know what it was like to have uh, you know a wife or anything like that. But I still could relate to it, and then um, I could indirectly relate to it. And then there's people like Seinfeld who are very observational, but he brings a certain perspective to his material that you don't get when you're um, when you're at an open mic and you're just hearing someone just kind of go through rote material. It's there's still a different life to it, even though he's talking about something that's not not a specific experience. And then someone like think about John Stewart. John Stewart is amazing at political humor. He has a very uh, a very hilarious point of view that makes us want to watch his material over anybody else that's talking about something political. So what's important is that you have an interesting perspective. So those are the first two questions. Uh, I'm going to get to hopefully the last three in the next video.